You've counted all my sorrows You collected every tear Every battle, every trial You carry me You are there in every victory
Welcome to our online worship service today. So glad to see all of you tuning in together with us. Before we start our service, we just want to take some time to pray for service and also to invite God's presence. So church, would you join me and as we and stand and as we stand, let's begin to lift our voices up to Him. Let's pray that God will prepare our hearts for today's service and let's invite God's presence into the rooms of wherever we are at. Amen? Father Lord, we just want to thank you Lord God for the privilege and the opportunity to still meet Lord uh, online even though we may not be able to meet physically Lord. Lord, we just want to pray a lot for, and ask Lord, will you Naturally, Lord God, your presence, Lord God, into the rooms, Lord God, of wherever we are at, Lord God. And pray, Lord, may your presence, Lord, today come like a rushing wind and feel, Lord, feeling, Lord God, every corner, Lord, of our rooms, Lord, be it our living room, our bedroom, our houses of flat, Lord. I pray, Lord God, that may your presence, Lord, be so strong today, Lord, that we will have, Lord, an experience with you, O Lord. Lord, I just want to pray, O Lord, for the different, one, different ones that are tuning in as well. Lord, we pray, O Lord, would you prepare our hearts, Lord, to be good grounds, Lord, to receive your word. Lord, would you prepare our hearts, Lord, to have an encounter with you, Lord. And pray, O Lord, God, uh, even as different ones come in, Lord, with different worries, different burdens, and different needs, Lord. Lord, may we lay every burden, every worry, every need, O Lord, down, O Lord, today, O Lord, and surrender them to you, O Lord, God. And that, Lord, may we put our focus, O Lord, God, back and onto you, O Lord. Lord, would you also continue, O Lord, to remind us, O Lord, God, that we are not alone, O Lord, God, in this time, O Lord, and that you, O Lord, are right beside us, O Lord, God. And Lord, I pray, O Lord, for the word that will be spoken today. Lord, thank you, Lord God, for the message, Lord. Uh, Lord, would you, Lord, may every word that is spoken today, Lord, be from you, O Lord God, and may it come alive, Lord, and pierce through our hearts, O Lord God, and go forth, Lord. Go forth, Lord, piercing through our hearts, Lord God, and transforming us, Lord. Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord God, once again, Lord, for this morning that we can have, Lord God, Lord, we should have your way, Lord God, in every aspect of service, Lord God. We should take over, Lord God, in today's service. We don't want to do church without you, O Lord. So, Lord, we should take over, Lord God. In Jesus' name, Amen. Next church, we want to continue to take this time to pray for the different X church locations as well. Uh, if it's your first time joining us, we are very blessed to be part of a wider family that gathers up across the different locations that is flashed up on the screen right now. Every week before their service, they take some time to pray for us and we want to do the same for them as well. So church, for the next 30 seconds or so, would you choose a church location that God has placed in your heart and begin to lift them up in prayer and I'll then close us in prayer. Amen. I just want to thank you, Lord, for the privilege, oh Lord, to be part of, of a such global family, Lord. Lord, we just want to commit, Lord, every service that is happening across the different locations, Lord, into your hands, Lord. Lord, would you have uh, your hands, Lord, upon their service, and Lord, may there be an open heaven, oh Lord, God. 
uh, in every service, oh Lord God, that's happening, oh Lord God. Lord, we also want to pray, oh Lord God, for different ones who are tuning in. Lord, would you prepare, oh Lord, their hearts, oh Lord God, to have an encounter with you, oh Lord. And Lord, just, we, Lord, we just want to pray, oh Lord God, for the different leadership teams, oh Lord God, Lord, uh, for them, oh Lord God, to to have the unity, O Lord God, to be united, O Lord God, as one, O Lord God, even as they continue, O Lord God, to build your kingdom, O Lord. And Lord, we pray, O Lord, for wisdom upon the different, wisdom upon every leaders, O Lord God, every pastors and, and every elders, O Lord God. And we pray, O Lord, that even as they continue, O Lord God, to lead your church, O Lord God, may it be done, O Lord God, upon your will, O Lord. And Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord God, for the provision, Lord, that you have given, Lord, uh, throughout these years, Lord God, upon the different church location, Lord. Lord, uh, thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for your love, Lord God. Lord, we pray, O Lord, and ask, Lord, would you continue, Lord God, to provide, Lord God, the needs, Lord God, of the different, uh, that the different church location has, Lord God. And Lord, we also want to pray, O Lord, that you continue, O Lord, to pour out your blessing upon them, Lord. Lord, that may your love, O Lord God, and your peace and uh, hope, O Lord God, go with them, O Lord God. And I pray, Lord, that they continue, O Lord God, to be a blessing, O Lord God, to the community, Lord, that you have placed them in, O Lord. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, we're now going to move into a time of praise and worship. So, I'm going to pass this time to Sam. Good morning, church. Big welcome again to our online Sunday worship experience. Let us all stand. We're going to worship. We're going to praise our God together. You know, the Bible says to clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. And on the count of three, why don't you just lift up a shout of praise to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. One, two, three. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. those hands up. We praise you, Lord. Waking up. Waking up knowing there's a reason. All my dreams come alive. Life is for living with you. I made my decision. My eyes wave wonders Forever young in your love This freedom's untainted With you No moment is wasted See the sun See the sun Now bursting through the clouds Black and white Turn to color all around All is new In the Savior I am found This is living now
bursting through the clouds black and white to the color all around all is new in the same Ryan found this is living now Whoa. this is living now you take me you take me high Take me higher than I've been before It's your perfect love that sees me so God, your freedom is an open door You are everything I want and more Oh, you're everything I want Oh, oh give God your shout of praise Oh, we worship you Take everything Oh, take everything oh, so You are my life You are my life and my treasure to 
Spirit of God, oh cry out one more time. 
want more of you. In awe of 
the one who gave it all so i'll stand my soul lord to you surrender all i am is yours so i'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned Worship team for the amazing time of worship. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. My name is Sweetie, and I will be your chairperson for today. If you are new and or it's your first time joining our service, I just want to encourage you to not be shy to leave us a comment, say hi down below. We usually, we would love to give you a warm welcome by give by giving you a handshake or a hug but as we can't do that right now we would love to spam you with thoughts of love emojis or reactions and we would love to connect with you in person too so please drop by or visit us when we can make, meet again soon now moving on i just want to encourage all of us to continue in this attitude of worship as we uh, worship god with our tithes and offering in the last homes when we learn from david um, how he worshiped God. He said that he doesn't want to offer God anything, um, some anything that costs him nothing. So I want to encourage all of us to catch that spirit of David and to offer God cheerfully and faithfully. Now you can do this in two different ways. Or you can either set aside an amount and put them put them in an envelope and uh, until and wait until we can meet again soon and can put that envelope in the offering bag or you can uh, transfer the funds to our church bank details as shown um, in the screen above uh, but please remember to use the reference TNO as you transfer the funds uh, as it, so that it can be identified as tithe or offering and as we prepare our hearts to give God please allow me to read from Pro. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 to 10. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be overflowed with new wine. Let's pray. Dear God, I just want to thank you, Lord, for being our provider and also this opportunity for us to be a blessing to the people around us. And as we continue to give faithfully and cheerfully, I just pray that Lord, you continue to provide and meet all our needs and to continue, continue to grow us to be more generous. We also ask and seek for your wisdom to use this funds to uh, bless your church and to grow your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, moving on, today I have two announcements for you for this week. The first announcement is Prayer service is happening this coming Tuesday for London and Edinburgh um, and it will be happening on Thursday for uh, Bristol. I just want to encourage all of us to join our respective homes to pray, even um, to uphold each other, to come together and uphold each other's requests or needs um, in prayer as we believe in the power of prayer and we also believe that God will continue to move even though we are meeting virtually and there's power in our prayer and but if you can't uh, or you if you aren't able to uh, meet 
uh, together with your homes, I also want to encourage you to set aside um, some time to pray uh, on that day, uh, especially uh, to stand in the gap for our lost, uh, our loved ones that hasn't known him, or just um, pray for this situation that we are going through right now. And the second announcement is a reminder of, of the prayer and testimony link that we have set up before. Um, I just want to tell you that um, if you have any prayer requests, no matter what you are going through right now, I just want to tell you that you are not alone and we want to support you in prayer and just to pray with you um, throughout your situation. So don't be shy to send in your prayer requests or besides, um, if you have any testimonies, either it's big or small, um, if God has moved in your life recently, I just want to encourage you to share your testimony um, in the link, uh, through this link. Who knows um, what uh, God will do with your testimony and you'll be an encouragement and also a reminder of God's goodness to, the, to someone that is going through something similar as you right now. So that's uh, the announcement for today. Um, now moving on, we would like to celebrate birthdays. Um, if it's your birthday coming up this coming week, um, starting from today up until this coming Saturday, please don't be shy. Just leave a comment saying, it is my birthday this week. And we will usually uh, uh, love to give you um, a chocolate, but as you can't do that right now, so friends, let's send them some chocolate emojis or even cake emojis, whatever it is. Uh, just uh, put, uh, put them down in the, co uh, in the comments. We would love to give you um, all the love that um, uh, we want to give you. And I know that it's Jack's birthday tomorrow and it's also Michael and Sam's birthday on Wednesday and also Windy's birthday on Thursday. So if any of you um, know them, just uh, feel free to drop them a message saying happy birthday and to just to wish them a, a blessed birthday. I just pray that all of you will have a blessed birthday this coming week and also to continue to grow stronger in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Every week we've been taking some time to pray for the pandemic that is happening right now across the world. Uh, even though things are getting better, but we still want to pray uh, for God to intercede and we believe that God is in control of everything. Um, we also want to pray for God's peace, hope and love to be upon this world. Amen? So let's pray. Father Lord, we just want to thank you Lord God uh, that we are able to call you our Father. Um, Father, we want to call me Lord. Um, the situation, Lord, uh, into your hands, Lord God, Lord, would you take control of it, Lord God, and have your way, Lord God, in this situation, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, um, that things, Lord God, have slowed down, Lord God, that things, Lord God, are getting better, Lord God, and less people, Lord God, are getting infected and less uh, deaths are seen, Lord God. But Lord, we just want to continue, Lord God, to pray, Lord God, and trust, Lord God, that Things, Lord God, will continue, Lord God, to get even better, Lord God. That we, there will be, that the day, Lord, that there will be zero infections and zero deaths, Lord God, will come, Lord God. And Lord, um, we thank you, Lord God, for the different, uh, uh, the frontline workers, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for their lives, Lord God. The doctors, um, the nurses, the pharmacists, and other essential workers, Lord. Uh, Lord, uh, thank you, Lord God, uh, for them, uh, Lord, who has put themselves uh, selflessly, uh, Lord, uh, at risk, uh, Lord, to serve, uh, Lord God, the people and the nation, uh, Lord God. Lord, we pray, uh, Lord God, would you continue, uh, Lord, to pour out, uh, Lord, your protection upon them, uh, Lord. Lord, may your peace, uh, Lord God, and your joy, uh, Lord, uh, continue, uh, Lord God, to follow them, uh, Lord, of wherever they go, uh, Lord, and be, let it. Let it be, O oh Lord, their strength, O oh Lord God, throughout this time, O oh Lord God. Lord, we also want to pray, O oh Lord, uh, for your wisdom, O oh Lord, to be upon, O oh Lord, every leader, O oh Lord God, of every nation, Lord. Lord, we pray, O oh Lord God, that uh, even as they guide their 
nations a lot through this pandemic, Lord, we pray a lot that every decision that they make, oh Lord God, uh, will be done, Lord, with great knowledge and great wisdom, oh Lord God. And Lord, we also want to pray a lot uh, for the different ones who are sick due to this virus. We pray a lot for their healing, oh Lord God. Lord, would you pour out, Lord, your your power, oh Lord, healing power, oh Lord God, upon them, oh Lord God, and may they be healed, Lord, completely, Lord, in the name of Jesus, oh Lord God. Lord, we want to continue to uphold, Lord, the different ones, oh Lord God, who are in the hospital requiring breathing assistance, Lord. Um, Lord, um, I pray, oh Lord God, we pray, oh Lord God, Lord, would you breathe, oh Lord God, your breath of life into them, oh Lord God, and may they come alive again, oh Lord. May, may they be healed, oh God, miraculously, oh Lord God, by you, oh Lord God. And we pray, oh Lord God, um, that um, they be healed completely, oh Lord God, and they will not require, oh Lord God, any breathing assistance anymore, oh Lord. Lord, we just all want to remember, oh Lord, the different ones, oh Lord God, who has lost their loved ones, oh Lord God, throughout this time, oh Lord. Um, Lord, with your peace and your love, oh Lord God, be with them. But Lord, would you comfort them, oh Lord God, would you be, be their comforter, oh Lord. Would you stay, oh Lord God, by their side, oh Lord, and guide them, oh Lord God, through, oh Lord God, um, these tough times, oh Lord God, that they're going through, oh Lord God. Lord, we also want to continue, oh Lord, to pray, oh Lord, for different ones, oh Lord, who has lost their job, oh Lord, due to this pandemic, oh Lord. We pray, oh Lord God, uh, for your peace upon them, oh Lord God, uh, but Lord, uh, we also want to pray, oh Lord God, would you provide, oh Lord God, every need that they have, oh Lord God. Uh, pray, oh Lord God, would you be their provider, oh Lord. Lord, uh, even though things may seem there is no hope, oh Lord God, but I pray, oh Lord God, they continue, oh Lord God, to hold on, oh God, to the hope, oh Lord God, in you, oh Lord God. And I pray, oh Lord God, continue to trust, oh Lord God, um, that you're in control, oh Lord, and greater days are to come, oh Lord. Lord, we also want to take this opportunity, Lord, uh, to pray a lot um, for anyone who's tuning in or anyone that we know a lot that might have, uh, that are sick a lot, God, in any form a lot, be it a cold or flu or injury or even a disease a lot, God, that um, they are battling a lot, God, in their bodies a lot. Lord, I just pray a lot, God, for your healing upon them, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, God, um, um, that you, O oh Lord God, are a God that can heal, O oh Lord God. And Lord, we just pray, O oh Lord God, for your healing power upon them, O oh Lord God. Lord, may they be healed, O oh Lord God, completely, O oh Lord God, no matter what sickness, O oh Lord God, that they have, O oh Lord God, in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord God. And Lord, I just pray, O oh Lord God, and that we continue, and that we believe, O oh Lord God, that it will be done, O oh Lord God. And that, Lord, they will be healed, O oh Lord God, completely, O oh Lord God. And Lord, we just want to commit, Lord God, everything into your hands, O Lord God. Lord, um, would you hear our cries and pleas today, O Lord God, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You know, Church, we are really blessed to have different preachers to speak to us for the past few weeks. And today, I would like to introduce you to someone that we haven't seen in a while. And I hope that you guys miss his message as much as I do. So Church, now let's prepare our hearts to hear from Pastor Dave. Morning Church, it's so good to be in church with all of you guys here again. Thank you so much for joining us for today's service. And uh, you know, before I get into today's word, I just want to spend some time just giving us a little bit more missions update. And uh, if you've been joining us for the last few weeks, you know that we are gearing up towards a missions offering in July. And we want to take the whole month of June to pray and to seek the Lord for an amount to give. And uh, the last two weeks have given us some updates on how our giving, our missions offering collected last year has been a blessing to our churches in Thailand, our churches in Indonesia. And uh, today I just want to give you an update uh, that uh, we hope that, you know, among some of the things that we can invest into this year is the work in Myanmar. Uh, and I just want to give you a, just a, a short introduction to X Church Myanmar, uh, led by Pastor Samuel, his wife Nini and they recently welcomed their beautiful uh, young daughter and uh, you know they lead a dynamic church there and this is an amazing church that's truly making a difference 
you know, growing church, growing people, uh, discipling Christians. And uh, this is an opportunity for us as a church that even as we collect an offering in July for missions, that hopefully some of these missions uh, uh, offering can go towards uh, building up our church in Myanmar. Just to give you a little bit of background, you know, recently with all the lockdown and uh, with the internet infrastructure not as good um, uh, as maybe other countries, the church in Myanmar had to do church over WhatsApp. That's right. You know, if you use the app, you will know that, you know, next to the typing button, there's a little button you can press to record a short uh, uh, audio memo. And that's how they've been doing church. You know, Pastor Sam has been pressing that button and just speaking and then just releasing it to the chat and people uh, uh, were hearing the sermons bit by bit, part by part. Uh, but despite all that, the church is growing. Despite all that, the church is giving uh, to the poor and taking care of people in, in such a time. And, you know, we just want to be uh, a church that that sows. And so I encourage you uh, for the month of June, I'm just using ex Myanmar as an example, but for the month of June, why don't you take time to pray and seek the Lord and say that God help me to give an amount because I want to give towards uh, the work that is happening all around the world, whether it's in Asia or Africa or to maybe a new church plan. God, we want to be part of that. Amen. And so I just want to give you an update on our ex -member. So even the next time when we do pray for our international church plans, you won't just be thinking, hmm, I don't know much about that church. And hopefully now when you pray, you remember Pastor Samuel, you remember his family, you remember his church congregation there, and through some of these pictures that we've shared with you. Uh, and I hope that that will ignite your heart to pray. Amen. Praise God. I will go into today's word. Uh, if you are taking down notes, uh, today's message is titled, you know what, hold on. Before I give you the title, can I just tell you a funny story? You know, it's been a while since I preached, you know, uh, more than a month actually. We've been highlighting different preachers, different ex-church coordinators. And of course, you know, last two weeks, we've just been so blessed by Pastor Kenneth. Uh, so maybe I shouldn't rush into it. I'm going to learn to pace myself. Let me start with a funny story. You know, Recently, um, you know, Pastor Cat uh, bought a bottle of Coke. Uh, we were just having, you know, a typical week. We were just writing groceries. Uh, and uh, that particular, I think it was a Friday night, we were thinking, hey, why don't we, uh, you know, it's the end of the week. Let's do something a little bit special. And uh, so let's let's eat some lamb chops. And so we were preparing. I was like, you know, we were marinating some lamb chops and, and preparing some mash by the side and vegetables. And we just wanted to have some, you know, good old fashioned lamb chops with potato and veg. And uh, Pastor Cat thought that it would be uh, a good, you know, uh, a good to have Coke. Uh, to Coca-Cola to kind of like go with the meal and cut through maybe the fattiness of that lamb. And so she saw what she thought was Coke and she grabbed a bottle of it. And, uh, you know, I prepared a dinner. And uh, as we sat down, ready to tuck in, ready to say our grace, uh, she went to the fridge and grabbed the Coke. And as she opened it, she said, uh-oh, I just realized I didn't buy Coca-Cola. I bought cherry coke now for those of you who are watching and you don't know the difference between cherry coke and coca-cola let me just tell you that's a huge difference okay if you don't believe me you can go out after this and have a taste and you, you tell me okay but basically a cherry coke and, and, and you know unlike normal coca-cola which tastes delicious um cherry coke and you know don't hate me if there's some cherry coke lovers out there or maybe even Dr. Pepper lovers out there, but cherry coke tastes like Dr. Pepper. It tastes like cough syrup. And so we open it and I thought, you know what? <sighs> you know, since you bought it, let me just let me just try. You know, how bad, right? How bad can cherry coke be? And I know in the back of my mind, I was like, it tastes like cough syrup, Dave. But I was thinking, oh, maybe my taste buds have, have adapted. Maybe it's been some years. Maybe it's not that bad. Maybe they changed the recipe. And I poured myself a glass and I took a sip and my face just curled up. And I was like, oh, it still tastes like cough syrup. And then 
we decided, okay, maybe maybe we'll just have water, you know, and so dinner was still good, but it doesn't change the fact that there was a bottle of cherry coke left in the fridge. Now, for some of you who know me, you know that I've got a bad habit. I think it's a good habit. You know, I've shared this before. I don't like to see things go to waste. Uh, and this is reflected in, in the way I do ministry. I, I, I hate it when I see people kind of like, you know, waste their potential away. And I'm especially uh, uh, upset when I see people waste food or, or if I accidentally, you know, waste food, you know, whether it's an accident by spilling stuff on the floor. I, I get really mad at myself. But anyway, uh, I don't like to see things go to waste. So... After a while, I thought, you know what, you know, I've got two options. I can either pour the cherry coke away or just chuck it away, but that would be such a waste. Why don't I try to finish it? I know it tastes yucky, but let me try drinking it bit by bit every maybe day. And so that's what I did a couple of weeks ago. I was like pouring myself a cup. Every time we had dinner, I'm like, oh, maybe just a little bit, just a little bit. And I drank and it's like, it's all cough syrup. Oh, why would people mix cough syrup and Coca-Cola? And then the next day I drank it and go like, oh, it still tastes like cough syrup. And the third day I was like, you know what? Cough syrup is not that bad. And then the fourth day, I, 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 I began to kind of like, you know what, I think I can get used to this. Yeah, I can taste the cherry notes. And then by the fifth day, I was like, hey, I think I can finish the whole bottle. And by the sixth day, I was thinking, oh, cherry coke's not so bad. Cherry coke is bad, guys. But what is the point of this weird story? The point of this weird story is, and, it, and, and hang in there, it ties in with my message today, is that, no matter how bad the situation is, no matter how horrible, no matter how dissatisfied we were, the thing about the human nature is our ability to adapt. And it can be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing because unknowingly we can also adapt to things that we have no business adapting to. And what happened to me was that I had no business adapting to cherry coke, but eventually I went like, oh, I think I like cherry coke and then the lord spoke to me and began to burp this message out and so let me get into the more serious stuff now if you're taking down notes the topic for today's message is called stockholm syndrome stockholm syndrome now just in case some of you are thinking what is that big word well let me explain to you stockholm syndrome is this psychological phenomena where victims uh, form a, a connection, a bond, usually sympathetic and in agreement with their captors and their abusers and their kidnappers. And this is named the Stockholm Syndrome because it happened, uh, you know, the most famous case of it happened in Stockholm, in Denmark. And what had happened was there was a bank robbery and people had been taken hostage. And, and what happened is that eventually the hostages started to sympathize more with the kidnappers, sympathize more with the robbers. Uh, and instead of wanting to be let go, they began to join the robbers as they went around uh, to commit more crime. And, and, and this is funny because it reminded me of, of another incident in the Bible where, you know, the people of Israel eventually after, I don't know, enough abuse, abuse even, they could get used to the abuse. Wow, that, that's amazing. You know, you know? And, and, and what had happened was that even though God had delivered them out of Egypt, a land of slavery and, and, and subjugation, but, but Egypt was still in them. And, and, and they started to develop, you know, maybe back then there was no Stockholm yet, but maybe they de began to develop a, a Egypt syndrome, a, a, a Egypt problem. And, and in Numbers, Numbers chapter 11, verse 4 to 6, tell you what, why don't we turn there? Numbers 11, 4 to 6. You know, this is, in my opinion, one of the most hilarious portions of the Bible. Uh, it says this. This is the complaint of the people. It says this in Numbers 11, 4. Now the mixed multitude who were among them yielded to intense craving. 
So the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who will give us meat to eat? We remember the fish which we ate freely in Egypt, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions. Have you ever craved for onions? They did. That's why it's funny for me. The garlic. But now our whole being is dried up because there are no onions. There is nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. And the Bible is trying to tell us again that because of our fallen nature, uh, the, the, the human nature is so full of sin that even though we could be at one time trapped, kidnapped, abused, you know, beaten, but given enough time, we can develop a Stockholm Syndrome to, to be okay with the subpa. And what had happened was that the children of Israel uh, were slaves in Egypt for 300 years and then God had set them free. But even in the freedom, they started to long for what they used to have. And it's so funny that in their longing for Egypt, they forgot. They could only think of the fish, the onions, the leeks, the melons, the garlic. Strange food cravings, I know. And, and forget the slavery. They forget that actually... They were slaves. They were not paid. They were abused. And yet all they could certainly think of due to like a spiritual Stockholm Syndrome was the fish, the melon, the garlic, the leeks, the onions. And forget, and not only forget, despise what was right in front of them. You know, it's so funny that at the end it says that all that we have is just manna. I mean, sometimes we got to pause ourselves and go like, wait a second. They were complaining about bread from heaven? Can you imagine that at one time they were slaves, and, but eventually the, 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 the Stockholm Syndrome got the best of them. And then when God was feeding them bread from heaven, they were complaining that all we have is bread from heaven. Man. You know, and this started to get me thinking about how uh, we, how corruptible we are and how easy it is for us to forget the very good things, the very purpose that God has called us out for. God had called his people out of Egypt for freedom and yet all they could think of is the fish back there. And God was feeding them fresh bread from heaven and, and, and all they had was complaints. And I started to think that, you know what, with this lockdown that's happening, my hope is that we do not develop a spiritual Stockholm Syndrome because the temptation is real. Because if the children of Egypt who were set free, you know, by God through the hand of Moses, through signs and wonders, can forget and begin to sympathize with their years of slavery, what more us? And my hope is that, you know, I know the lockdown is going on and I know that, you know, some countries are easing up, not the UK, unfortunately. And, and, and it's easy for us to get jealous of other countries, maybe Australia, New Zealand. But it's also very easy for us to get used to what we're not supposed to get used to. And there are worse things to get used to than Cherry Coke. We can actually get used to this new status quo. We can actually get used to the lockdown. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, no, 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 nobody is, is getting used to the lockdown. But maybe we are not used to staying at home, but there are other things that we can get used to. And my hope today is to help us to you know, be mindful of the reality of Stockholm Syndrome and to fight against the temptation to try to water down our fire. And hopefully with this reminder, this will also excite you that, hey, this shall pass. This is not permanent. Don't get used to this. There are three things I want us uh, to always have in our hearts or to have again in our hearts, just in case, 
you know, we have been hijacked, our spiritual world has been hijacked uh, by the lockdown. And these three points I want to give you today all start with the letter F. And the first one is faith. Faith. Don't let this lockdown, don't let this, uh, this season that we're living in rob you of your faith. Now, you might be thinking, you know, I, I, well, I still have faith. I still believe. But what I want to talk to us today goes far more than just believing. My fear is that if we're not careful, because we are right now being locked down and every day we are feeding ourselves, it can't help it. But, you know, we're feeding ourselves with news with facts and, and with sciences and nothing wrong with all that. But if we're not careful, that can become our new craving. That can become our new appetite. And instead of desiring boldness and courage in God, we can slowly get used to playing it safe. We can get used to comfort. And, and, and I want to remind us again today that God has called us to live by faith, not by sight. You know, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says this, For we live by faith, not by sight. We live by faith, not by news reports. We live by faith, not by what BBC or, or, or the latest medical report tells us. Our feelings are not dictated by the statistics. Our feelings are not dictated by the daily government briefings. We are meant to live by faith and not by sight. And what does living by faith mean? And I just feel the strong urge to remind us again, living by faith is not just believing. Faith is not just believing. Faith is about devoting our lives to God. Faith. Can I write it down as I was drinking cherry coke? The Lord began to speak this message to me. I know that's a strange genesis and the Holy Spirit began to form these words. Can I write something I believe is from the Holy Spirit to all of us? Faith is saying, Lord, the good, the bad, the ugly, it is all yours. I am willing to do what you're asking of me. I am willing to change. I'm willing to go. And I don't want us to, in this lockdown, think we have faith, but actually what we have is comfort. You know, faith is not just about tuning in to church online. Faith is not just about having more teaching. Faith is about having courage. You cannot spell faith without courage. Courage to pick yourself up again. Courage to keep going on. Courage to believe. Courage to hope. Abraham was courageous. So courageous that he left his family when God called him. So courageous that he was willing to sacrifice his son when God commanded it. So courageous that even though he was old and he knew that his body had dried up, he still by faith courageously believed God that through God and in him, God can birth nations, courage. And I don't want us to confuse comfortable faith with courageous faith. There's only one type of faith and that kind of faith is courageous. You know, if you don't believe me, let me give you another scripture. This is my favorite scripture. Those of you who have been asked long enough, you know this is mine. Galatians 2.20 says this, I have been crucified in Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. Let me read that one more time. I live by faith in the Son of God. Not live in comfort. Not live in safety. Not live and have my feelings dictated by the daily briefings. And I, I, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. I hope that after all this lockdown is done, we won't be afraid to hug people again. I hope that we won't be afraid to engage with people again. 
You know, I hope that the moment the church is allowed to meet again, that we would cherish every Sunday and rush to meet in person again. You know, because the thing is this, we can get used to fear. We can get used to playing it safe. Maybe you're saying that, no, I've overcome fear. You know, because Pastor Ken has preached an amazing message on overcoming fear. Yeah, yeah, but maybe you've overcome fear, but or maybe you just changed the name of fear. And now it's called comfort and safe. Then my fear, <laughs> if I can use it that way, is that when we are allowed to meet again, that there'll be many of us who will say that, you know what, I think, I know, I know, I think pastor's being too crazy. I don't think it's safe yet. Let's play it safe. Well, I'm here to remind you, I'm not built. I'm not called by God to play it safe. I'm called by God to live by faith. And don't get me wrong, it doesn't mean that I throw my brain out the window. No, when we have to be safe, we have to be safe, but, but I still want to have faith. And if it comes between safety and having faith, I will always choose faith. I will always choose what God tells us to do. Because scripture says that the life that I now live, I live in the Son of God. I want you to know that Jesus was no coward. Jesus was no scaredy cat. And, and, and if I were to live this life that I still have to live, this lockdown will pass and we have to live a new season. I want to live not in fear of a second wave. I want to live by faith. I want to live by faith. You know, still wanting to impact the world, still wanting to love people. Still, I will still lay hands. I will still shake hands because I'm built. I've been called. We've been called to live by faith. And that is something that I hope we will never allow the current status quo to rob us off. I pray that we will not develop a Stockholm Syndrome for comfort and safety and playing it safe. I hope that we will always put scripture, you know, as the deciding factor of our lives and not our feelings or even necessarily what science says. Again, I clarify, I'm not asking us to be ignorant or foolish, but you know what I'm saying. Everything we deal with is a spirit. You know, we do not reject facts, but we reject sometimes what the, 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 the spirit behind facts, what they're trying to do. Uh, try to maybe, you know, stifle our enthusiasm. So many people are, are, are saying, oh, what if a second wave? What if a second wave? You know, I, I reject that. I say that my God can heal and he is healing. I thank God for the, for the infection rates that are coming down and I declare complete healing. You know, that's what faith is. And I pray that we will not become double-minded Christians because the thing is this, Stockholm Syndrome, spiritual Stockholm Syndrome, it can deceive us to thinking that we're having faith when we're actually being double-minded. Amen. So I pray that through this time, you know, you'll reject uh, uh, what the spirit of fear is and say, God, I still want to live by faith. I want to love by faith. <laughs> I want to engage. The world is, is, is hurting like never before. Oh, and the world needs the church of God. And may we not shrink back, but begin to have, be bold and courageous to engage with the world around us. Amen. Praise God. Second point is this, the fear of God. First point, don't ever let spiritual Stockholm Syndrome hijack your faith and don't let your comfort hijack the fear of God in your life. Amen. The fear of God. I know you might be thinking the fear of God. You know, oh, that sounds scary and serious. But you know what? It is, it is a powerful, liberating thing. As, as, as I told you, as I was preparing this message, I just felt God says that, you know what? Teach my church, remind my church again to never lose sight of, of, of fearing me. And I know it sounds a strange thing, but let me explain to you. You know, the fear of God is not some irrational fear. In fact, the Hebrew word for fear is yirah. And yirah means to be reverential, to be very respectful, uh, and to be in awe. That means to worship. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I do know, and I, and I thank you for tuning in to Church Online. And, and, and Church Online is one of those things that I feel God speaking to us um, that we shouldn't stop doing. 
Even when we can meet back physical, I don't know how that will look like. Maybe that means that we have to buy some equipment. Maybe that means that we're going to have a new ministry, some, some people who will operate cameras. But I do realize that, you know, Church Online is helping us reach people. And it's a good thing. I love the fact that now people can, can come to homes via Zoom. I, I hope that we don't just go to homes via Zoom. But in the future, when we can meet for homes in physical, uh, you know, in a physical way again, that those that live far away, those who might have a late uh, a day at work, uh, previously they would just say that, no, oh, I can't join you. But maybe now with Zoom and technology, people can say, hey, I'll, I'll still be home, but I'll be late. Or, or I'll still be home, but I'll be Zooming in as I'm working over time uh, at home or at work. I, I still want to be there. You know, I zoom, I'm going to zoom in to pray. And those are all good things. And I thank you for tuning in. But I, I hope that the casual nature, and let's admit it, church online is more casual. You know, whether you were standing or sitting doing worship, I don't know. Uh, but what I think I do know that it's casual. I'm not surprised if even right now as I'm speaking, some people are sitting down having a cup of coffee and watching me. Nothing wrong with that. But I pray that... The casualness of the status quo right now will not rob us from the fear of God. When I think of the fear of God, I do not think of being fearful of God, but I think of not wanting to disappoint God. I'm reminded when I think of the word fear of God, that God is deserving of my respect. And, 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 and the word yerah is to, be, to have reverential awe, to be reverential and to be in awe in worship. And, and I don't want to sour your day, but how was worship today? And I'm not talking about how did the band do. I'm talking about how did you do? Only you know. Did you give your all? Or were you just casually clapping along? Or were you just putting on in the background as you were doing dishes? Or, or, or worse yet, maybe you know, you're watching this from the future and not live right now. And, 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 you, and during the worship part, you were just put, you, worse, you skipped through it. <laughs> because now we're streaming live, you can't fast forward. But maybe you watch it one day later, you can just vroom, skip and get to the part that I like. May we never... May we never allow uh, this status quo. Don't get me wrong. Technology, streaming is good, but don't let it rob you. Don't let it steal the fear of God away from you. Do you know that it's possible to both love God and fear Him? You know, the, the, the example I give all the time is, is in my relationship with Kat. I'm not ashamed to say this, <laughs> but I both love her and I'm also afraid of her. I know some people might think, oh, that's not very much. I don't care. I'm not afraid that she's going to hurt me. I'm afraid of disappointing her. I don't ever want to, I, I, I want to love her. But at the same time, in my love for her, I, I also don't want to disappoint her. And I'm fearful that I will. I don't want to take her for granted. I'm fearful that I can. I don't want to hurt her. And I'm fearful that I unknowingly do. And so I find that when you really, really, really are into someone, your love for that person is not just love, there is a healthy element of fear. And when I think of the fear of God, I'm thinking, God, I love you. And at the same time, I don't want to disappoint you. God, I love you. But at the same time, I don't want to take you for granted. God, I love you, but I don't ever want to love you so much that I take it for granted, that I become too casual, that I forget that you are not just Jesus, my best friend, but you are also Lord Jesus, my Savior. And, and I don't want to ever love God so much that I take holy living for granted and think that, oh, God's just in the business of forgiving my sins. No, God's also in the business of of, of purifying me and, and part of my worship to God is seriousness. And part of my worship to God is holy living. Part of my worship to God is, is improving myself and giving God my best. You know, have we allowed you know, all this to rob the fear of God? I pray no. 
I pray. No, let me let me read you some things that I wrote down. When I think of the fear of God, oh, let me let me read you another scripture, right? Uh, Matthew chapter ten, verse twenty-eight. Just in case you're thinking, where is this coming from? Matthew ten, verse twenty-eight. You might be thinking the fear of God sounds like a very Old Testament teaching, but this is Jesus teaching in Matthew ten twenty-eight. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear Him, fear God, who can destroy both body, soul. In hell, wow! You, 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 that there's a, such a funny departure from the usual Jesus. You know, blessed are the meek, blessed are the peacemakers. Be afraid of God. Be very, very afraid. And that is that is what we need to balance as Christians. Yes, you know, God is love, but I must also fear Him. You know, Jesus was fully God and fully man. I think it is absolutely possible, in fact, important, pivotal for us to 100% love God and to 100% be in awe, be in reverence of Him. Amen? You know, and not just that. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7 says this, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom or the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instructions. This is Proverbs. Right, so if you want to, if you want to know stuff, if you want to have a good beginning, Proverbs says, Proverbs one, first, Proverbs knocks it out by the pocket and says that if you're coming to God looking for wisdom, know that wisdom starts by fearing God. In fact, Proverbs, you know, the I think thirty chapters of Proverbs, you know, there are, there are more than twenty references to fear God, fear the Lord, fear God, fear. Well, when twenty out of thirty tells you to fear God, you know that it's important. But it's not just Old Testament important that. That there is great joy, there is great freedom, there is great love in fearing God. You know, I also personally believe that the times that we're living in, God is actually using this pandemic, this lockdown, uh, as a wake up call for His church. You know, I'm always reminded that God doesn't always move in ways where we expect Him to move. You know, even when Jesus was walking face to face with people here on earth. So many people rejected him for being the son of God and being the Messiah because they expected a king. But God came in the form of a carpenter. They expected Jesus to be conquering and defeating the Romans, yet Jesus did conquer and he did defeat, but it was a much more evil empire than the Roman Empire. It was called the Empire of Sin and Death. And I'm reminded again that God doesn't always move like how we imagine him to move. And so what if, what if we are right now living in the great end times revival where the gospel is more available than ever before thanks to the internet, where every church is broadcasting information online, where more people are praying than ever before, at least I hope so. You know, what if God is using this as a wake-up call? And I do believe it. For both Christians and the church to rise up and to begin to repent and begin to reach out. What if God is using the, the, the pandemic to show that science can't be trusted and using the pandemic to show that there's still racial injustice and that all men are sinful and in desperate need of a savior what if this is the wake-up call what if this is the end time harvest and when i think of that i think of the fear of god because when i think of the fear of god i also think of living life with urgency and i pray that we will not be so comfortable with just tuning in to church that we forget that we were meant to make disciples that we forget that yes love god with your all Maybe that's another question. How was your worship? <laughs> Did you love God with your all this morning? But we also need to love our neighbor. That's, that's the fear of God. To not just do in part, but to do completely. And God says, if you love me, love me with your all and love your neighbor as yourself. I'm reminded again, the urgency that we're living in, that we're living in also an age where more people are dying and death, at least to Christians, shouldn't spark fear because we don't need to be afraid of death. Jesus has paid the price. 
But we need to have our hearts broken for every life that passes away and a reminder that the time is ticking down and that we need to work while it is still day. Fear of God. Point number three is this. Let me read you. I just, I just sat down and I saw something I wrote. Let, let me just finish point number two of this. Do not let the casualness of church online hijack you away from fearing God. Point number three, fresh fire. Fresh fire. How do you fight against the Stockholm Syndrome? Ask God for fresh fire. Let me write this down, something that God has spoke to me about. As I told you, um, during this lockdown, not only are we doing church online, but God is also preparing me to believe again, to trust again, to go to Him again for how and what church will look like when we can meet face to face. And I'm reminded by God, it says that the, don't look back. That the, when we can meet again, don't look back and try to recreate what you used to have. And I'm reminded that by this because even with the lockdown happening now, you know, everything is changing. You know, and one of the things that uh, is most changed and most impacted is student ministry. And, and I love reaching out to campus students and, and we have campus students in all of our church plants here. Uh, but I'm hearing news. Universities are saying we're not sure when are we going to start. Cambridge, Cambridge of all places is saying that uh, we might just do the first year online Cambridge. And I can imagine whether people will be, other universities will be falling soon. I think, well, Cambridge is, is, is putting stuff online. Let's put stuff online. And I'm thinking, will that affect students from actually flying in? Will, will, will the first year of university this year in September just be, you know, virtual learning? And then people are kind of like tuning in from different countries, even though they're studying in the UK. I can't help but think about this. I can't help but think that, you know, will that be a reduce in students that we can reach out to? And, and will our strategies need to change, etc., etc.? And I'm reminded by God, don't look back. Don't look back at your experience. Don't look back at last year and, and think, how can I recreate last year? Don't look back, look to Him. In fact, don't just look to Him. But God gave me this, and I, I don't want to read it out to you because I feel that this applies not just to me, but to everyone here. The end of the lockdown, I feel the Holy Spirit say, the end of the lockdown is not a finish line. It is the starting line. <sighs> I'm going to read it all the time. The end of the lockdown is not the finish line. It is the starting line. And God is saying that, you know, it's time to start again. It's time to, to do church differently. It is time to look to me again. It is time to press the refresh button again. It is a starting line. Don't look to recreate what you used to have, but look to creating something new. And then to do that, I gotta go to God. To, to, to build God a, 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 a church 2.0, or church 2020 2.0, maybe that's what God wants to do this year. I gotta go to God. And not just go to God, but I need fresh fire. And so I wanna read some scripture. Matthew chapter 9, verse 17, Jesus teaches us this parable, this example about the new wine skin nor do they put new wine sorry this is matthew chapter 9 verse 17 nor do they put new wine into old wine skin or else the wine skins break and the wine is spilled and wine skins are, are, are ruined but they put new wine into new wine skins and both are preserved not only do we need fresh fire new wine but we also need to be new wine skins. And one of the things about fire is that fire purifies and fire reveals. The only positive thing about fire is that it purifies and it reveals. You cannot get gold without fire. 
You cannot, you, you, you cannot. And God is saying that I, I know fresh fire is needed, but I also need my people to be purified by that fire first because new wine cannot be put into old wine skin. Would you allow God's fire to check your heart so that we become new wine skin so that when church reopens again, we're not going forward with old wine skin. The wine skin of lockdown cannot survive the fresh fire of the future. And I want us to use this time because the thing is this, Stockholm Syndrome can just after a while go like, you know what, you know, why, why can't we, you know, stay the same? And my fear is that after a while, uh, we, we just get used to church online and we just want to have it easy. And, but God is saying, no, 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 no. What you had, the faith, the growth, the, 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 the worship you gave God during church on lockdown, that cannot survive when we meet again. God is deserving new praise, new fire, and we got to be f new wineskins. And I'm reminded again in, in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 2, you go back and read Acts chapter 2. I'm running out of time. But basically, the disciples, after Jesus resurrected, they convened with Jesus, set his feet, learned, learned, learned. And when Jesus ascended, they did not immediately rush out to do ministry, even though ministry was important. But they sat there, they gathered, and they prayed, and they sought the Lord until the day of Pentecost happened in Acts chapter 2. In other words, they did not go forward until they received fresh fire from heaven. And, and, and think about this for a while. What did they have before that? The teachings of Jesus. What did they have before that? Sitting at the feet of Jesus. What did they have before that? Jesus as preacher, teacher, cell group leader, senior pastor. You know, how many of you will feel like I can take on the world if Jesus was your senior pastor? How many of you will feel that you're so blessed if Jesus was your home leader? You know, how, how many of you will feel like you are, you are, you know, the, the, you, you, you're the best Christian in the whole world if Jesus is your personal mentor and your personal coach? And yet, despite having all of that, Jesus as mentor, coach, teacher, pastor, preacher, friend, the disciples didn't think of just rushing out there. Instead, they waited for fresh fire, new wine. And not only new wine, but the new wine to transform them. And go back, read Acts chapter 2, tongues of fire came down, and then boldness entered them. And the Peter that stood up to preach in chapter 2 was a new Peter. That wasn't the Peter that betrayed Christ and ran away. That wasn't even the Peter that fell on his ground and worshipped Jesus. That wasn't even the Peter that Jesus restored. That was the Peter that the Holy Spirit baptized. And so I want us not to let the current status quo create some sort of false sense of security and comfort zone around us and hijack our spiritual walk but let's begin to say, God, God, I, I, I thank you for the grace that you've given us in this time of lockdown where we can still meet in church, that I can still serve, I can still receive. But God, I want faith. God, I want faith, fresh faith. Faith that says to the future, future, I'm not afraid of you. Future, whatever comes, the good, the bad, the ugly, God, I know it's all from you. And I'm going to go out there and love the people I need to love and, and hold the people I need to hold and do what I need to do. And we want to be people that fear God. People who will not take, never take God for granted, never take His love for granted. And people who will act with urgency. People who fear God enough to go like, maybe this is what God has been preparing me for. So I'm going to go out there and going to do my part to bring in the end time harvest. 
And of course, fresh fire. Fresh fire. Don't forget the new season ahead of us is not the finish line. It is the starting line. And that starting line means new fire in your bones to ignite you so that we can run. Remember the life of the disciples. They had Jesus and it's great to have Jesus, but they sat until they had fresh fire from heaven, from the Holy Spirit. And then the world was truly never the same again. If that is God's formula, then it is God's formula now. And I pray that we will, we will rise up as a church. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Would you allow me to pray? Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for all that you are doing. And Lord, I pray right now that you will, you will remove the spiritual Stockholm Syndrome. You will, you will not allow uh, the current status quo to make us too comfortable. Help us not to love that which is passing, but help us to love you and to desire the new. Lord, help us to not forget faith. Help us not to be so comfortable checking the statistics, checking the facts, following the, 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 the orders given by the news that we forget what it really means to live by faith. Help us not to let our emotions continue to be hijacked by the stats, but help us to live by faith. Help us to live with a healthy fear of you. Help us to love you and fear you and fear disappointing you. Help us to live with urgency and, and, and realize that what's happening right now is a wake-up call from you. And Lord, we don't want to be a church that slumbers. We want to be a church that's awake, a church that's on the watch, a church that fears you and desires to honor you. And last but not least, Lord, help us, Lord, to desire fresh fire. Give us fresh fire. Fresh fire. If the apostles and the first church didn't launch out until they received fresh fire, not just fresh fire, allow the fresh fire to change them, not change us. Make us new wine skins with your fresh fire. Lord, allow us to spend uh, the remainder time of this lockdown, and we believe that it's gonna end soon. But before it ends, help us to check our hearts and help us to work. On, on, on being who you want us to be. Help us to change in ways that you want us to change. Help us to glorify you. Lord, I'm, as I'm preaching this, I'm preaching to myself. Lord, help me to change. Lord, I want to be a new wineskin for you. Lord, I want to be a new wineskin for you. Lord, use us, Lord, for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God bless you, church. God bless you. If you've been touched by today's message and would like to invite Jesus into your life, why don't you join me in saying this prayer? Lord Jesus, thank you for paying the ultimate price for my sins by dying on the cross for me. I receive your love and forgiveness and eternal life by faith. Come into my heart and life and be my Lord and my Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Dave, for that powerful message. I hope that all of you are blessed and that you have gotten something out of the message today. I just want to encourage you to start applying that in your daily life starting from today. Or if you have just made that prayer to accept Jesus into your lives, please, please don't be shy to leave us an email or just drop us a message through Facebook. We would love to know you and to guide and walk alongside with you in this journey together. Now, before we close the service, please allow me to pray. Dear Father, we pray for your covering and care to come upon our entire church family. Pastors Kenneth and Sandra, all our elders, pastors and church plant coordinators, both here and abroad, as well as our leaders who serve your house faithfully week after week. Give us your daily peace and protection and provide all our needs according to your riches in glory, especially the wisdom to, to continue to be a church that's in line with your perfect will. Let your joy always be our strength and, your, and let our lives always bring you glory. In Jesus' most precious name I pray, 
Amen. Amen. Lastly, um, please raise your hands as I declare the benediction, which is God's blessing over you. Reading from Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for joining us today. The service, uh, our church service is officially over now, but if you are free, do jump onto your home's hangout and drop by to say hi. Have a blessed week, everyone, and see you next week. Bye!